All right, guys, today we're talking about something that, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful optimizations you can do on Linux. And I'm talking about something that makes a real difference, the kind you feel when you use your computer. In recent years, browsers have become the heaviest application on our system. It doesn't matter what distribution you use. It doesn't matter if you're on Arch, Ubuntu, Fedora, Gentoo. The problem is always the same. Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, LibreWolf, Brave, all these browsers make massive use of the disk. They read and write continuously. Cache, cookies, sessions, SQLite databases, extensions, storage API, IndexedDB, service workers. It's a sea of microfiles that are continuously written and read from the disk. But what happens if we take all this noise, all this continuous input-output, and move it completely to RAM? What happens is the browser becomes instant. And most importantly, it will barely touch the disk anymore. Today I'm going to show you how to do it on any Linux distribution, safely, permanently, and without losing your data. So pay attention because this is one of those things that once you try it, you never go back. So, before we get into the meat of the procedure, let's understand what happens when you use a browser. Every browser, whether it's Firefox, Chrome, Chromium, or any other, has what's called a profile directory. This directory is where the browser keeps everything. Your extensions, open sessions, cache, passwords, cookies, SQLite databases, configurations, service workers, origin-based storage, IndexedDB, everything. For example, on Firefox, this folder is in slash.mozilla slash Firefox slash and has a name like something.default release. On Chromium, Chrome, Brave, it's in slash dash config slash and then the browser name with a folder called default. This is the folder we want to put in RAM. Now why is RAM so much faster than disk? Let's do some numbers because numbers are important. The latency, that is the time it takes the system to respond to a request, on an NVMe SSD is about 70 to 120 microseconds. On RAM instead, we're at 80 to 120 nanoseconds. RAM is about a thousand times more responsive than disk. A thousand times. And then there's bandwidth. A modern NVMe SSD does about 3000 megabytes per second. DDR4 or DDR5 RAM does from 25,000 to 50,000 megabytes per second. We're talking about 10 to 20 times faster. And it doesn't end there. The browser's SQLite databases, which contain history, cookies, sessions, over time, they become fragmented, they become heavy, they become a disk bottleneck. In RAM, these problems disappear completely. There's no fragmentation, no wear, everything is instant. And then there's the issue of SSD wear. A modern browser writes gigabytes per day in cache and sessions. If you put the profile in RAM, all these writes no longer touch the disk. Your SSD will thank you and will last much longer. And finally, startup. When you launch the browser, it normally has to load dozens and dozens of megabytes from disk. If everything is already in RAM, loading is instant. You really feel the difference at first startup. You can follow this text guide, which in my opinion is much simpler and more straightforward to consult, directly on my site. You'll find the link in the description. There I've inserted all the commands step by step, complete and already tested. I personally don't use systemd, so I guarantee 100% functionality on two alternative init systems. Runit, which is the one from Void Linux, OpenRC, which is the one used by Alpine, and also on the classic BSD style init of Slackware. For systemd it should work without problems, but always remember one fundamental thing. Don't blindly copy and paste commands. Think about what you're doing, Understand what it's going to touch in your system, and above all, never trust anyone, not even me. Here instead, I want to explain the steps in a conversational way without showing you commands so you really understand what you're doing and why it works. Good, now we're really getting into it. The objective is simple. Take the browser profile folder and move it inside dev m, which is a special directory resident in RAM. The browser will continue to work as always, but in reality, it will be working entirely on volatile memory. To allow it to do this, we create a symbolic link. Basically, in place of the old folder on disk, we put a pointer that directs it to RAM. Naturally, RAM is volatile. When you turn off the PC, the content disappears. 
That's why we need a mechanism to restore the profile at startup and save its state at shutdown. This is where the restore and save scripts come in. One that copies data from disk to RAM when you turn on the computer, and one that copies them back from RAM to disk when you shut down the machine. This way the configuration is fast, safe, and completely persistent. The first step is to identify which profile the browser actually uses. Every browser has a folder where it keeps everything. Firefox puts it inside .mozilla slash Firefox, while Chromium, Brave, and Chrome use their folder in .config. Inside you'll find a directory that contains your entire digital life. Extensions, preferences, cookies, open sessions, databases, cache, everything. That's what we're interested in. Once identified, you need to create a new home for this profile in RAM, a dedicated folder inside Devs HM. Then you need to copy all the files from the original profile there, maintaining exactly the permissions and structure. After that, the profile on disk needs to be renamed. We transform it into a backup without deleting it. It's important to have it available for safety. At this point, in place of the profile folder, we put a symbolic link that points to the copy in RAM. From the outside, it looks like a normal folder. The browser doesn't notice anything and continues to work as always, but every operation happens at RAM speed. Starting it, changing tabs, loading a session, everything becomes immediate. Obviously, as I was saying, RAM empties at shutdown, so we need to prepare to make the profile magically return to its place every time we turn on the computer. The mechanism is simple. A restore script automatically copies the contents of the backup into the RAM folder at startup before the browser starts. A save script instead saves all the changes present in RAM to the backup on disk when you shut down the machine. This keeps the configuration stable and reliable. The final part depends on the type of init system your distribution uses. If you're on Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Arch, or anyway a modern distro with systemd, you'll need to create two services, one that executes the restore script during graphical boot, and one that executes the save during shutdown. If instead you're on Alpine or Gen2, which use OpenRC, it's enough to insert the scripts in local.d so they're executed automatically. On Void Linux, which instead uses Runit, you create a service dedicated to startup and one that gets called at shutdown. And that's it. From this moment on, every time you start your PC, the browser profile is restored to RAM, and every time you shut it down, it's saved to disk. All in the background, all automatic. The result is an incredibly fast browser that doesn't stress the disk with practically instant opening times and a responsiveness that will make you wonder how you lived without it. Let's now talk about concrete advantages. First, perceived speed increases from 5 to 20 times. Startup is instant, extensions load immediately, switching between tabs is fluid, scrolling is perfect, there's no more SQLite bottleneck. It's just something else. Second, drastic reduction of disk accesses. A modern browser can write logs, cache, history, session restore, thumbnails, network predictor, cookies, extension data, tens of thousands of writes per day. In RAM, all this disappears. Your disk is practically idle. Third, the SSD lasts much longer. It reduces unnecessary writes by orders of magnitude. If you have an SSD that's maybe not brand new, this can make the difference between another two years of life and having to buy a new disk. Fourth, the profile is more stable. SQLite in RAM doesn't fragment, doesn't corrupt. It's always fast, always responsive. And fifth, greater privacy. When you turn off the PC, all the RAM is zeroed out. The backup on disk contains only what you want. If someone physically accesses your computer while it's off, they don't find anything in RAM. But there are also disadvantages, and they need to be said. First, you use more RAM. A browser can use up to 1 or 2 gigabytes of RAM for the profile. If you have 8 gigabytes of total RAM, it's doable, but you have to be careful. With 16 gigabytes, it's perfect. With 32, it's ideal, and you don't even notice it. Second, you need the restore scripts. Without those, the profile doesn't exist at startup, and the browser won't start or creates a new profile. Third, possible data loss in case of system crash. If the PC shuts down suddenly, freezes, power goes out, RAM is erased, everything that hasn't been saved is lost. You can mitigate this by doing an automatic sync every so many minutes, but it's something to keep in mind. And fourth, not all browsers handle missing profiles well. 
Firefox is particularly sensitive to this, so it's better to do everything correctly. Chromium instead is much more robust, and if the profile isn't there, it recreates it without problems. Since every time I publish a video, there's always a Mr. Perfection who could find a flaw, even in the Sistine Chapel. Let me address the classic objections right here, so we save time and skip the usual noise. Putting the profile in RAM is useless. Linux already uses page cache. It's not true. I tell you with all my heart, here we're putting the entire working set of the browser in volatile memory, which is another world. DevF's M is not real RAM. It's TMF's is pure space in RAM managed by the kernel, with fallback to swap only if necessary. It's literally dynamic RAM. Saying it's not RAM is technical ignorance. You lose data in case of crash. Yes, you're right, Mr. Perfection. There are mitigations for this thing, but you can't have everything in life. It's less secure because cookies are in RAM. Yes, there are also the paranoid ones, but I respect them. Anyway, sir, we're being invaded by aliens. In reality, it's more secure, not less secure. But I have little RAM, and it's not necessary. Classic useless comment. Rather than using 2 gigs of RAM to watch the screen freeze while you try to render, Invest that small amount for efficient navigation. Chrome Firefox are not designed for this. Totally false. Browsers are designed to run on TMPFS, on ZRAM, in ephemeral environments, on OverlayFS, in RAM-based CRUTs, in containers that recreate storage at every startup. In poor words, if you don't like me, there's a contact section on my site. You can write to me directly, but don't come saying nonsense in every one of my videos. I'd like to receive strong criticism, maybe just criticism, but the real kind. And criticize because you want to criticize while I notice there are people who criticize regardless. Putting the browser in RAM is one of the most powerful optimizations you can do on Linux. It's not a trick. It's not magic. It's just technology used the right way. The advantages are enormous. Responsiveness, privacy, speed, SSD longevity, fluidity, and if done with the correct scripts, with restore and save, it becomes a safe, permanent, and reliable configuration. It's one of those things that once you try it, you never go back. I personally have been using it for years and couldn't do without it anymore. When I use a computer without this configuration, I really feel the difference. It's like going from a normal car to a sports car. The responsiveness is on another level. So if you have enough RAM, if you're willing to spend 10 minutes to configure everything, do it. It's absolutely worth it. And if you have doubts, questions, problems, write them in the comments and I'll gladly answer. That said, see you in the next video. Bye.